The SpaceX Starship Mega Rocket broke up above the Indian Ocean as it embarked on its third test flight today. The Starship 3 will be 400 times more payload for less than the cost of a Falcon 1. It's just absolutely incredible, major test milestone, something we wanted to accomplish on flight two, getting to it today. So we're confident that, we, that like let's say, we, I'm, I'm very confident su success is in the set of all possible outcomes. You, you, you just want to make sure not only for, from an engineering perspective of how confident you are that you've got it all figured out. It is by far the biggest flying object ever made. SpaceX Starship. All right, let's blast off into the fascinating world of the SpaceX Starship. In the history of space travel, we've seen some pretty cramped rides. Think of the Apollo capsules or the Soyuz spacecraft, more like tin cans strapped to rocket engines than luxurious spaceships. And even the latest Orion spacecraft? Well, let's just say you can forget about standing up straight inside it's like trying to do yoga in a shoebox. But fear not, fellow space enthusiasts, because Elon Musk, the mastermind behind SpaceX, has a game-changing vision. Enter the SpaceX Starship, a gleaming 9-meter diameter behemoth that's like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. We're talking Flash Gordon levels of futuristic awesomeness here. The SpaceX Starship Mega Rocket broke up above the Indian Ocean as it embarked on its third test flight today. The overall, overall sort of path to making life multi-planetary. Uh, Starship is currently re-entering Earth's atmosphere. This is super exciting. There are all these little variables that they have to know about. And, and so the more tests they get under their belt, the safer everybody's gonna feel about this. We have achieved the most launches of any rocket in a single year ever. Now here's the juicy part. Elon's not just building this mammoth spaceship for kicks and giggles. No sir, he's got his sights set on something truly out of this world. Thousands of people embarking on a six-month journey from good old Earth to the dusty red plains of Mars. Yep, Mars. Elon's dream is to turn this fantastical idea into reality, and he's very serious about it. But what sets the SpaceX Starship apart from its cramped predecessors? Well, for starters, it's big. With a whopping 9-meter diameter, this bad boy is spacious enough to make even the most claustrophobic astronaut breathe a sigh of relief. And that towering structure? It's not just for show. It's a symbol of humanity's boundless ambition to explore the cosmos. Imagine stepping inside the starship and feeling like you've entered a whole new world. A world where comfort and space are no longer luxuries but necessities. Elon envisions this vessel as more than just a means of transportation. It's a beacon of hope for a future where humanity can spread its wings and journey to the stars. Crew Considerations Let's talk crew considerations for our epic interplanetary journey aboard the SpaceX starship. The Starship 3 will be 400 times more payload for less than the cost of a Falcon 1. Uh, this, this, yeah, so no other uh, family of orbital class rockets has launched more than 63 times a year. That was Soyuz. We have the most advanced rocket engine that's ever been designed. Aerodynamic uh, forces that it's going to suffer when it comes back into Earth's orbit. Delete the nuke and add the landing part. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, um, that's the fastest way to get somewhere. Now, when it comes to picking the perfect crew for our Mars mission, size really does matter. We're not just talking about squeezing into those sleek spacesuits, we're talking about managing resources and keeping everyone's sanity intact. Trust me, you don't want to be stuck in a metal tube hurtling through space with a bunch of cranky astronauts. So what's the magic number? Well, after much brainstorming and number crunching, it looks like a crew of 10 is the sweet spot. Why 10, you ask? Well, for starters, it's enough people to handle the day-to-day -day tasks without feeling like you're trapped in a sardine can. Plus, it's a good balance between having enough company to stave off space loneliness and not so many people that you run out of oxygen before you even reach Mars. But here's the tricky part. Too few crew members and you risk turning the starship into a floating powder keg of social conflicts. Picture it. Tension running high, tempers flaring, and before you know it, someone's launched a mutiny over who forgot to refill the coffee machine. Not exactly the peaceful journey through the cosmos we had in mind, right? On the flip side, too many crew members could spell disaster faster than you can say, Houston, we have a problem. With each extra person comes an extra mouth to feed, an extra body to accommodate, and an extra drain on our precious resources. And let's not even get started on the potential for claustrophobia-induced meltdowns when you're stuck in close quarters for months on end. It's just absolutely incredible, major test milestone, something we wanted to accomplish on flight two, getting to it today. And there, was, there, there are actually so many upgrades between flight one and two that uh, it would actually take it like hours to go through them all. Ultimately, I think we, we might be able to get the cost per flight to Earth orbit down around 
two million dollars or three million dollars? Um, we're not sure how far we're going to make it. Again, this is the furthest that we've gotten uh, in our test flight. Uh, but one of the biggest upgrades was uh, going from uh, hydraulic to electric uh, actuation of the engines. Interior layout and facilities. Welcome aboard the SpaceX Starship, where the interior layout is as crucial as the thrusters propelling us through the cosmos. You step inside our sleek, spacious vessel and are greeted by several levels, each serving a unique purpose in our interplanetary adventure. First up, we've got the cargo level, where we stash all the essentials for our journey to Mars and beyond. Think food supplies, equipment, and anything else we might need to survive in the great expanse of space. But wait, there's more. Down here in the depths of the starship, you'll also find our trusty life support systems keeping us alive. From oxygen to water recycling, this is the beating heart of our journey, a true lifeline in the vast emptiness of space. I'd say we're confident that, we, that like, let's say, we, I'm, I'm very confident su success is in the set of all possible outcomes. That is all predicated on this Starship technology that SpaceX has been uh, hired. I mean, the, kind of the mind-blowing thing is, like, there is an actual path that we are on to make life multi-planetary. I mean, Starlink is incredible. Falcon 9 is the, the primary lift vehicle, launch vehicle for, for Earth. I mean, the a Starship is uh, more than twice the thrust of a Saturn V. Now, as we ascend through the levels, things start to get a bit more comfortable. Up next, we've got the crew quarters, where each astronaut can kick back and relax after a long day of spacewalking and stargazing. With plenty of space for personal belongings and maybe even a space plant or two, it's the perfect home away from home. But hey, life in space isn't all work and no play. That's why we've carved out a little slice of heaven for our gym facilities. Maintaining physical fitness is crucial during our long duration voyage, and there's nothing like a zero gravity workout to keep those space legs in top shape. From weightlifting to cardio, our gym has got it all, minus the gravity, of course. And last but certainly not least, we've got the common area, a hub of activity where astronauts can come together to relax, socialize, and maybe even catch a glimpse of the stars through our massive viewing window. It's a space for camaraderie, laughter, and maybe the occasional zero-gravity dance party. After all, even astronauts need a little downtime every now and then. When you think about where this started out, this was literally just a, like a, a sandbar. For, you know, with, with some upgrades down the road, it'll, it'll actually be, I think, probably over 20 million pounds of thrust. So this one that I have is flat, like this is what would be positioned on the flaps of Starship. They haven't had a successful mission until today with those Starships. They've done two test missions, both of which have had to self-destruct. That was an amazing achievement. So I was like, wow, that's, and it worked. Communication challenges. Communication in deep space, it's a bit like trying to have a conversation with someone on the other side of the galaxy. As our trusty SpaceX Starship ventures farther and farther into the great unknown, we're going to encounter some pretty hefty communication challenges. You see, the thing about space is that it's big, like really, really big. And that means the distance between us and good old Earth is going to start playing tricks on our signals. Imagine this. We're cruising along, making stellar progress when suddenly we hit the halfway point between Earth and Mars. That's when the real fun begins. Because at this point, it could take a whopping 10 minutes for a message to travel between us and our home planet, or even between us and the red planet itself. You, you, you just want to make sure, not only for, from an engineering perspective of how confident you are that you've got it all figured out. For a while there, I was not convinced that success yeah. was in the set of possible outcomes, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is very important, actually. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk says there will be at least six more Starship flights this year. The reason that it actually didn't quite make it to orbit was we vented the liquid oxygen. Now, you might be thinking, what's the big deal? It's just a little lag, right? Wrong. This lag isn't just a minor inconvenience. It's a game changer, especially for crew members used to the instant gratification of modern communication. Imagine waiting 10 whole minutes just to get a response to your space memes or your urgent pizza order. It's enough to drive any astronaut a little stir-crazy. But the real kicker? It's not just about the practicalities of communication, it's about the psychological impact too. Picture being millions of miles away from home, surrounded by nothing but the silent expanse of space and suddenly realizing that you're completely cut off from the rest of humanity. It's enough to make even the bravest astronaut feel a little lonely. It is meant and built to take humans to the moon and then on to Mars, and that image right there is critical. They're really lightweight. Uh, they, they sound um, a little different than I would have expected them to, but they are ceramic. Second launch was 
to check out the launch pad because obviously the, after the first launch we dug a pretty big hole. Because I'd say currently the, the, the best rocket engine ever is probably the RD-180 or RD-170. You, know, you want to make sure, NASA wants to make sure that if we're going to put humans on top of one of these things, that everybody feels like we're, it's ready. Powering the Starship. Let's dive into the nitty gritty of powering our mighty SpaceX Starship as we journey through the cosmos. First up on the list of potential power sources, solar energy. Rows upon rows of gleaming solar panels soaking up the sun's rays, powering our spacecraft as we sail through space. Sounds pretty futuristic, right? Well, it is. But here's the catch. Those solar panels might be a tad too big to lug around on our starship. That's why we might need to construct them in space and attach them to the ship once we're up and away. It's a bit like building a giant cosmic jigsaw puzzle, but hey, anything for renewable energy. Next, we've got batteries, the unsung heroes of modern technology. They offer us a way to store energy for those cloudy days, or, you know, space days. But here's the thing, batteries are heavy, like really heavy. And that extra weight means less room for cargo. Definitely not ideal when you're trying to pack everything but the kitchen sink for a trip to Mars. And I think there's a pretty good chance that it, it does Earth-to-Earth -earth transport as well. Um, there's not even been any orbital rocket that's been fully reusable ever. This is the biggest rocket ever. It has 33 engines. It is by far the biggest flying object ever made. But fear not, fellow space travelers, because we've got one more trick up our sleeves, hydrogen fuel cells. Now these babies are the real game changers. Not only do they provide electricity to power our ship, but they also produce water as a byproduct. It's like slaying two birds with one stone. Plus, hydrogen is the lightest element in the universe, which means we can keep our starship light and nimble as we soar through the stars. Of course, there's still some work to be done to figure out the nitty-gritty details of scaling up hydrogen fuel cells for interplanetary travel, but hey, we're pioneers, right? Exploring the unknown, pushing the boundaries of what's possible, that's what we do best. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.